called the gopis feelings of separation the gopis of vrindavan were so attached to krishna that they were not satisfied simply with the rasa dance at night they wanted to associate with him and enjoy his company during the daytime also when krishna went to the forest with his cowherd boyfriends and cows the gopis did not physically take part but their hearts went with him and because their hearts went they were able to enjoy his company through strong feelings of separation to acquire this strong feelings of separation is the teaching of lord chaitanya and his direct disciples his direct disciples the six goswamis when we are not in physical contact with krishna we can associate with him like the gopis through feelings of separation krishna's transcendental form qualities pastimes and antraj are all identical with him there are nine different kinds of devotional service devotional service to krishna in feelings of separation elevates shall i carry on or hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare there are nine different kinds of devotional service devotional service to krishna in feelings of separation elevates the devotees to the highest professional level to the levels of gopis it is stated in shrinivas acharya's prayer to the six goswamis that they left the material opulence of government service and the princely status of life and went to vrindavan where they lived just like ordinary mendicants begging from door to door but they were so much enriched with the feelings of separation that they enjoyed transcendental pleasure at every moment similarly when lord chaitanya was at jagannath puri he was in the role of radharani feeling separation from krishna those who are in the disciplic succession of madhva gaudiya sampradaya should always feel separation from krishna worship his transcendental form and discuss his transcendental teachings his pastimes his qualities and his antaraj and his association that will enrich the devotees to the highest devotional perfection feeling constant separation while engaged in the service of the lord is the perfection of krishna consciousness the gopis used to discuss krishna amongst themselves and their talks were as follows my dear friends one gopi said do you know that when krishna lies on the ground he rests on his left elbow and his head rests on his left hand he moves his attractive eyebrows while playing his flute with his delicate fingers and the sound he produces creates such a nice atmosphere that the dangians of the heavenly planets who travel in space with their wives and beloveds stop their airplanes for they are stunned by the vibration of the flute the wives of the demigods who are seated in the planes then become very much ashamed of their singing and musical qualification not only that but they become afflicted with conjugal love and their hair and their tight clothes immediately loosen another gopi said my dear friends krishna is so beautiful that the goddess of fortune always remains on his chest and he is always adorned with a golden necklace beautiful krishna plays his flute in order to enliven the hearts of many devotees he is the only friend of the suffering living entities when he plays his flute all the cows and other animals of vrindavan although engaged in eating simply take a morsel of food in their mouth and stop chewing their ears raise up and they become stunned they do not appear alive but like painted animals krishna's flute playing is so attractive that even the animals become enchanted and what to speak of ourselves another gopi said my dear friends not only living animals but even inanimate objects like the rivers and lakes of vrindavan also become stunned when krishna passes with peacock feathers on his head and his body smeared with the minerals of vrindavan with leaves and flowers decorating his body he looks like some hero when he plays on his flute and calls the cows with balram the river yamuna stops flowing and waits for the air to carry dust from his lotus feet but the river yamuna is unfortunate like us and does not get krishna's mercy the river simply remains stunned stopping its waves 
just as we also stop crying for Krishna in expectation. In the absence of Krishna, the gopis were constantly shedding tears, but sometime when, that, when they expected that Krishna was coming, they would stop crying. But when they saw that Krishna was not coming, then again they would become frustrated and begin to cry. Krishna is the original personality of Godhead, the original of all Vishnu forms. And the cowherd boys are all demigods. So just as Lord Vishnu is always worshipped and surrounded by different demigods like Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, Indra, Chandra and others. When Krishna travelled through the Vindavan forest or walked on Govardhan hill, he was accompanied by the cowherd boys. While walking, he played his flute just to call his cow. Just by his association, the trees, plants and other vegetation in the forest immediately became Krishna conscious. A Krishna conscious person sacrifices everything for Krishna. Although the trees and the plants were not very advanced in consciousness, by the association of Krishna and his friends, they also became Krishna consciousness. They then wanted to deliver everything, whatever they had, namely their fruits, flowers and the honey incessantly falling from their branches. When Krishna walked on the bank of the Yamuna, he was seen nicely decorated with tilka on his face. He was garlanded with different kinds of forest flowers and his body was smeared with the pulp of sandalwood and tulsi leaves. The bumblebees became mad after the fragrance and sweetness of the atmosphere and began to hum. Being pleased by the humming sound of the bees, Krishna would play his flute. And together the sounds became so sweet to hear that aquatic birds like cranes, swans and ducks were charmed. Instead of swimming or flying, they became stunned. They closed their eyes and entered a trance of meditation in worship of Krishna. One gopi said, My dear friends, Krishna and Balram are nicely dressed with earrings and pearl necklaces. They enjoy themselves on the top of Govardhan Hill and everything becomes absorbed in transcendental pleasure when Krishna plays on his flute, charming the whole created manifestation. When he plays, the clouds stop their loud thundering out of fear of disturbing the vibration of his flute. Instead, they respond with mild thunder and so, cong so congratulate Krishna, their friend. Krishna is accepted as the friend of the cloud because both the cloud and Krishna satisfy the people when they are disturbed. When the people are burning due to excessive heat, the cloud satisfied with rain. Similarly, when people in materialistic life become disturbed by the blazing fire of material pangs, Krishna consciousness gives them relief like a cloud. The cloud and Krishna having the same bodily color also are considered to be friends. Desiring to congratulate its superior friend, the cloud poured not water but small flowers and covered the head of Krishna just like an umbrella to protect him from the scorching sunshine. One of the gopis told Mother Yashoda, My dear mother, your son is very expert among the cowhead boys. He knows all the different arts of how to tend the cows and how to play the flute. He composes his own songs and to play them he puts his flute to his mouth. When he plays, either in the morning or in the evening, all the demigods, including Lord Shiva, Brahma, Indra and Chandra, bow their heads and listen with great attention. Although they are very learned and expert, they cannot understand the musical arrangements of Krishna's flute. They simply listen attentively and try to understand, but they become bewildered and nothing more. Another gopi said, My dear friends, when Krishna returns home with his cows, the footprints of the soles of his feet with flag, thunderbolt, trident, and lotus flower relieve the pain the earth feels when the cows traverse it. He walks in a stridite, which is so attractive, and he carries his flute. Just by looking at him, we become lusty. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. 
Just by looking at him, we become lusty to enjoy his company. At that time, our movements cease. We become just like trees and stand perfectly still, unaware that our hair and clothes are loosening. Krishna had many thousands of cows and they were divided into groups according to their colors. They were also differently named according to color. When he would prepare to return from the pasturing ground, he would gather all the cows as Vaishnavas count 108 beads, which represent the 108 individual gopis. So Krishna would also count on 108 beads to count the different groups of cows. When Krishna returns, he is garlanded with tulsi leaves. A gopi describes him to a friend. He puts his hand on the shoulder of a cowherd boyfriend and begins to blow his transcendental flute. The wives of the black deer become enchanted upon hearing the vibration of his flute, which resembles the vibration of the veena. The deer come to Krishna and become so charmed that they stand still, forgetting their homes and their husbands, like us, who are enchanted by the ocean of the transcendental qualities of Krishna, the she-deer become enchanted by the vibration of his flute. Another gopi told Mother Yashoda, My dear mother, when your son returns home, he decorates himself with the buds of the kunda flower. And just to enlighten and gladden his friends, he blows his flute. The breeze blowing from the south creates a pleasing atmosphere because it is fragrant and very cool. Minor demigods like the Gandharvas and Siddhas take advantage of this atmosphere and offer prayers to your son by sounding their bugles and drums. Krishna is very kind to the inhabitants of Rajabhumi, Vrindavan, and when he returns with his cows and friends, he is remembered as the lifter of Govardhan Hill. Taking advantage of this opportunity, the most exalted demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva come down to offer their evening prayers, and they accompany the cowherd boys in glorifying the qualities of Krishna. Krishna is compared to the moon born in the ocean of the womb of Devaki. When he returns in the evening, it appears that he is fatigued, but he still tries to gladden the, in the inhabitants of Vrindavan by his auspicious presence. When Krishna returns, garlanded with flowers, his face looks beautiful, adorned with golden earrings. He walks into Vrindavan with a stride just like the elephants and slowly enters his home. Upon his return, the men, women, and cows of Vrindavan immediately forget the scorching heat of the day. Such descriptions of Krishna's transcendental pastimes and activities were remembered by the gopis during his absence from Vrindavan. They gave us some idea of how attractive Krishna is not only to human beings, but to all animate and inanimate objects. In Vrindavan, everyone and everything is attracted to Krishna including the trees, the plants, the water, and animals like the deer and cows. That is the perfect description of Krishna's all-attractiveness. The example of the gopis is very instructive to persons who are trying to be absorbed in Krishna consciousness. One can learn very easily associated with Krishna simply by remembering his transcendental pastimes. Everyone has a tendency to love someone. That Krishna should be object of love in the central point of Krishna consciousness. By constantly chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and remembering the transcendental pastimes of Krishna, one can be fully in Krishna consciousness and thus make his life sublime and fruitful. Thus end the Bhakti Vedanta purport of the 35th chapter of Krishna, the gopis' feelings of separation. Thank you very much. Om Jnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurn Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurdave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamai Hyam Dadhati Shabadantikam Vande Hang Shri Guru Shri Jatapadagamala 
Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Sagrasatam, Sagana Raghunatan Vitams Tam Sadivam, Sadvaitam Savatutam, Krishna Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna Padan, Sagana Lalita, Sri Vishakan Vitamscha, E Krishna Guruna Sindho, Dina Bandho Jugatpate, Gokesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostate, Tapta Kamsana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavane Shri, Krishna Bhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hori Priye, Vansha Kulp Dhrubhyascha Kapa Sindho Pyevacha, Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namo. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Adaita Gadadhar Shri Vashadi Gaur Bhakta. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. Well, this is the attachment of the gopis for Krishna. During the days, the cowherd boys used to go out into the forest in Krishna's association. But the I need to move this now. That's better. Huh? But the gopis couldn't go. But as Prabhupada said, their hearts went with him, and so their minds were always absorbed in thinking of Krishna. In this feeling of separation, which Prabhupada said elevates devotees to the highest level of perfection. So this is the teachings of the Goshamis and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how to love Krishna with this feeling of separation from Krishna. Because in that feeling of separation, the love becomes more intense, the memory of Krishna becomes more intense. <coughs> so Srila Prabhupada very strongly speaks in favor of this method of cultivating Krishna consciousness to feel the separation from Krishna. We find here the details how they were talking about Krishna's attractive qualities uh, in detail. His left arm is, uh, what is it? He lies on the ground, he lefts on his, rests on his left elbow, his head rests on his left hand. So they're remembering all of these uh, details. The, they talk about the, um, Krishna attracting the women of the higher planets flying in their airplanes. They talk about his attracting the, the cows and how the cows become stunned, just stand there with a morsel of food in their mouths and their ears perked up to hear Krishna's flute song. The lakes and rivers come stunned. So they, in this way, discuss and crying for Krishna, feeling separation. Hare Krishna. Is that good? I don't want to just repeat the descriptions. They're um, poetic and relishable. But the essence of them is that they're re remembering again and again so many things 
about Krishna, how he speaks, how he smiles, how he plays on his flute, how he herds the cows, how he attracts all the moving and non-moving living entities, and how he returns home at the end of the day. So this is Krishna consciousness to be absorbed in thinking of Krishna. Uh, his, his form, his qualities, his activities, his mm, devotees, his entourage, his abode, everything about Krishna. All right, let's stop there. All right, are there some questions or comments? Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna. Mm-hmm. Maharaj, can I ask one question from Bhagavad Gita, which is not related to this? Yeah, if there are no questions about what we've read, then... Yes, Maharaj. Uh, in the shlok, uh, Yajna uh, Karma Samudvava, there is this line. Annad bhavati bhutani parjan. So what is the meaning of this last line, Yajna Karma Samudbhava? Yajna Karma Samudbhava. Uh, the beginning is... Mm, Annad bhavati bhutani. Uh, Annad bhavati bhutani, all the living beings subsist on grains. Parjanyad annasambhava. Uh, yes, the uh, Annad bhavati bhutani. Parjanyad annasambhava. The grains depend on rain. Uh, Yagyad bhavati parjanya. And the rain depends on proper performance of yagya. And yagya karma samudbhava. And yagya depends on performance of prescribed duties. If we don't perform prescribed duty, yagyartat karma no nyatra. Prescribed duties should be performed as a matter of yagya or sacrifice for Vishnu. Or they should, what should we say, um, be directed towards sacrifices, just as in previous ages they used to perform literally big, uh, yeah, swaha, swaha, big sacrifices. In this age, it's um, Harikirtan, chanting of the holy name of Krishna. But these yagyas become, uh, are, uh, what would you say, a product or outcome of performing prescribed duties. When we perform prescribed duties, then we can perform yagya. If we don't perform our prescribed duties, then everything's out of whack. Yagya karma samudbhava. Uh, yeah. When the members of society perform their prescribed duty, then they'll be acting. They'll naturally act in, in service, whether it's sacrifice to the demigods or sacrifice to the Supreme Personality of God. But they, uh, this will be an outcome of performing their prescribed duties. We can look at the what Prabhupada says about it.
Yeah, Srila Prabhupada doesn't comment on that particular line. So I won't say more. Is that okay? So Maharaj, like if somebody, let's say from a Vaishya, he is doing his prescribed duty. Someone from? Vaishya class. And he is doing his prescribed duty of, uh, um, let's say, Krishi, Goraksha, Vanijam, something. And then the Yajna is actually Harinam Sankirtan. So, how they both are if related? If he's doing his prescribed duties, then he'll have some milk products to contribute, or he'll have some money to contribute. Uh, he'll have something to contribute. Uh, just like Satsrut Maharaj, he was working uh, when he first came, working at the welfare office and giving uh, Srila Prabhupada uh, money, basically giving most of his his money to Srila Prabhupada. So that was a sacrifice. Hmm. The sacrifice wouldn't have been possible if he weren't working. The sacrifice depended on his doing some work. The other boys weren't working. They couldn't give anything. <laughs> they stayed in the storefront and did some service and so on. But Prabhupada valued that Satsrut Maharaj Raman and also had a job. They were working, so they were able to give something. So the, if you're a Vaisha, you'll have some money. You can give something for the performance of Yajna. Uh, yajna Karma Samudbhava. If you're a king, also you can pull together the elements for a big sacrifice. Or you know, in Kali Yuga, you can, wherever you are, you can get involved in, in Hari Kirtan. <coughs> but yogya karma samudpa generally sacrifice depends on performing duties so that you'll get something work karma can be translated simply as work if you don't work no work no pay no pay what will you give for the yogya so Maharaj can we say prescribed duty is equal to devotional service no not necessarily. It's not that there has to be some connection with Krishna, otherwise just performing your prescribed duty. There's, it's said that followers of some uh, some acharyas accept Barnashram as, as devotional service. If you're just, because Barnashram Acharvata, Purushena Parapuman, Vishnu Radhyate Panta, uh, mm, so, from that point of view, if you're performing your duty in, in Varnashram, you're serving Vishnu. You're performing uh, service. Uh, but generally, we don't consider Varnashram very, you know, we want to see direct devotional activities hearing, <coughs> chanting, remembering, praying. In that case, prescribed duty will become devotional service. If some directly... If you connect it to Krishna. Otherwise, just, you know, the, the people are doing their, their work and they have this slogan, work is worship. But no, not just that I'm working. And so that's, that's it. We have to connect Yajyartat uh, for the sake of, of Krishna. One has to work. Otherwise, it's simply karma. Our idea is not karma, but bhakti. And maybe you can say karma mishra bhakti. So if you mix your karma with, with bhakti, so you've begun making progress, and gradually you can come to the point of pure devotional service. But if there's no, you're, we're not even connecting it to devotional activities, then the, the, it's very the, its value as mm, service is very thin. It's very thin, you know. All right, he's following the principles of Dharma or Varnashram. That's not counted as so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So. There are two types of like workers. One is working 
some normal work is doing and giving up the results for the yajna and one is working directly for the yajna let's say. so is can we say that one who is working directly he is better in a better state from one point of view from another point of view it depends on your consciousness the person is working directly you know but his consciousness is not thinking of krishna whereas the person who's working indirectly but always thinking of krishna is actually in a higher position Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, before I apologize if I put my question in a wrong way, um, this is a question from Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhyalila chapter 15. The entitled says the Lord has served Prashadam at the house of Sarvam Bhattacharya. The text number is 108. It says one does not have to undergo initiation or execute the activities required before initiation. One simply has to vibrate the holy name with his lips, thus even a man in the lowest class can be delivered. Mm. So Maharaj, my question is, in the purpose, Srila Prabhupada uh, gives a reference of Jiva Goswami and Hari Bhakti Vilas, that no, Diksha is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking, because the scripture says that it is not important, that someone has to go, but uh, here Prabhupada is going against the scriptures and no, saying... Maju, what? What you were? 2, 15, 108. Chapter 15? 15, 108. Yeah. And verse number is 108. I remember the purport. Um, certainly, in Prabhupada's not going against the scriptures. He's following Jiva Goswami, as yes. I recall. The, so this is glorification of the holy name. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, The holy name is independent. Um, yeah. Yeah, in fact, there it is, self-sufficient. Akrishti krita chaita sam sumana sam ujjatanam cham hasam achandalam amuka loka sulapho Ashascha mukti shriyaha no diksham natcha sadkrityam natcha purascharyam nalag ikshate mantro yam rasanas prageva palati shri krishna namatmakaha the hmm, benefit of chanting Hare Krishna doesn't depend on anything uh, this is a verse from Padyavali of Rupa Goswami. Doesn't wait for Purasharya, doesn't wait for initiation. It's totally independent. You can't require that, no, you can't do anything for someone if he's not initiated. Oh, holy name, you can't, you can't do anything. You have to, he's not initiated. We have a GBC resolution that if a person's not initiated, the holy name can't give him any mercy. No. Holy name is Krishna. Uh, so the holy name can do everything. It doesn't re require approval. It doesn't require, uh, you know, a sheet to be submitted, submitted by your temple president or bhakti leader. Uh, it doesn't require anything. That's the nature of the holy name. Krishna's purna uh, shuddha nitya mukta. Vinatan, Dhamma, not different from Krishna. And Krishna is Swarat, independent. So, uh, the. Yes, so that's the point that the holy name can do everything. But, uh, just like the. Prabhupada gives the example that Rabindranath Tagore never attended university. Never attended university. And yet, as the author of Gitanjali and so many celebrated works, 
he received a, an honorary doctorate from Oxford University. So that's Oxford University. They don't, can't tell them, I'm sorry, he didn't attend any classes. He didn't do any assignments. He didn't sit for the exams. They can just give him a, a, a doctorate. Uh, that's within their power. Now, if you and I think, well, I won't go to the university either. I'll just get a, an honorary doctorate like Rabindranath Tagore. That's not recommended. Hmm? That's not recommended. So the so nothing is required. No formalities, no initiation, no purasharya or previous activities for purification. No regulative principles. Krishna can give his mercy to anyone he wants. The holy name can give mercy to anyone that he wants. But now if I think, it's all right, good, and I won't do anything, I'll wait for mercy to descend. That's not good. And therefore Jiva Goswami has uh, written about that in some uh, detail. And where does Prabhupada write about that? In the beginning of the purport, hmm? 108. Words 108. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He gives Moving many back. references. Yeah. Hmm? He gives references yeah. there, many. One doesn't have to undo anything. But Jiva Goswami, Prabhupada, yeah. as I said. So the uh, regulative principles are there. Unless one's initiated, when you can't worship the holy name properly. Hari Bhakti Vilas. Yeah. One must be initiated. Unless one's initiated. And this isn't Prabhupada saying, he's just quoting. Yeah, just quoting many Shastras here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How it is important to take the initiation. Mm -hmm. So the... Mm -hmm. And then Prabhupada relates it to Iskan, where we have yep. six months of waiting and following the regulative principles before he can be initiated. Then one is initiated according to the standard procedure. So, uh, and actually Prabhupada relates this to the process of deity worship. This is the, a crucial part. In other words, the chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is so powerful that it doesn't depend on official initiation. Hmm? Uh, but if one's initiated and engages in Pancharatra Vidhi, the deity worship, his Krishna consciousness will awaken very soon and his identification with the material world will be vanquished. So uh, at such a time, when one is situated on the absolute platform, one can understand the whole, that the holy name of the Lord and the Lord itself are identical. So the idea is that none of these other things are required because chanting is independently powerful. But still we're recommended if you want to get the full benefit then don't just chant, do the chanting and the deity worship side by side. The Bhagavad Vidhi, Pancharachriki Vidhi. Um, if we think, no, just chanting is, is everything. No, it's recommended you worship the deity and you chant Hare Krishna. Because chanting, the deity worship will also purify us and help us be, help us chant nicely. So the So on one side, doesn't need anything. On the other side, better to do all these things. Don't wait for the honorary degree. Is that okay? I've got another question, but I just want to see if anybody has to ask. You're on. Maharaj, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, he created an institution, Gaudiya Vaishnav, and there, furthermore, Srila Prabhupada 
make that scorn. But before Bhakti Santa Mara, there was no such institution called people like people being initiated by their spiritual masters like that. Yeah. I mean, by seeing the Kali, and they were really highly, you know, advanced. Maybe Bhakti Vinod Thakur started something. Okay. A little bit, not to the states, same level as Gaudiya Math, but he started something. But before that, certainly it was there was no institution. Yeah, by by seeing this verse has been said, ki, you you don't need to do all those things. Yeah, you can just chant Hare Krishna. So I was mm. thinking, so what was the need for establishing an institution and and following proper rules and regulations of the scriptures and following the acharyas? Uh, the what is that? Shruti Smriti Puranadi Vidim Vina. Kantiki Harir Bhakti Pataya Bhagavad. If we don't follow the rules and regulations, we'll go off course. Guru Goswami is why has he written this book, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, and in the early part given so many rules and regulations. If rules and regulations don't matter. So if one doesn't follow the rules and regulations, one just becomes a disturbance to the society of devotees. So it doesn't need an institution. One can do all of these things on one's own or at home. Uh, but on the other hand, just like Gurukul, it didn't wasn't a big institution. Um, Brahmacharya would go to the house of a guru. He would learn something. Didn't need you know a big. Didn't need a Gurukul building. Didn't need a headmaster. Didn't need uh, tuition. Didn't need anything. Yeah, the, uh, guru would. Old classes, our guru would invite some boys. Now it's become a big, you know, something more organized. So everything like that. And if we didn't organize it, no one would, would take part. Hmm. Institution means to organize, to distribute. Just like we're distributing so many books because we have an organization to do it. We have a BBT to, to publish, we have devotees to distribute. So that's the nature of organization. It gives you a lot of facility. It has its drawbacks also. When you're in an organization, there are all these considerations. You know, there's, there's red tape, there's uh, so many problems that come from, you know, there's all the legal questions and there's, you have to finance the institution, you, you have to cultivate donors, you have to uh, keep up the, you know, the account books, you, have to, you know, all these things that go with, so it's a big botheration. And then the lives of the devotees become aligned in part with const institutional concerns. We need you to go here. We need you to go to there um, for institutional reasons, not necessarily because that's what you most uh, are best fit for. But well, we need someone there. We need a pujari, or we need a book distributor, or we need a temple president, and you're it. So these are some of the concerns that are there with an institution. Even uh, there weren't big institutes, but in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time, there were temples. Temple is an institution. Uh, so much is the income, so much is the expenditure. Yeah. For the deity, they would get some income. There would be some expenditure. There was property that belonged to the temple. Mm -hmm. So the, the, it was otherwise, when the Goswamis were sitting under trees, there was no institution. But when, when they built temples, then something of an institution came into existence. Not like ISKCON, but still. Yeah. You know, when they built Madan Mohan Temple, I'm sure somebody had to take charge of seeing that the, the bricks were in the right place, that, you know, everything is done according to some standard, and that who's going to be the Pujari, and who's, you know. You, 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 you can't get away from it. Institutions are 
mm, of great benefit and institutions are of great harm. But you really can't avoid, that if you want to carry things forward, you can't avoid having an institution. It's very hard. I even saw the minutes of a meeting of one group that had split off from ISKCON. And they were trying to preach according to their, what they'd gotten. Uh, I think they'd align themselves with another guru or else they were independent, I think with some other guru. And you see the meeting of their leaders and they, they're basically trying to organize, but they don't want to be an institution because they've all come from ISKCON and they, they had their experience. They, you know, uh, we don't want to be an you know, institutions. And yet they wanted to carry forward what they were doing. And you, they needed an institution, you know, they, they needed somebody to be in charge of this, someone to be in charge of that, someone to be in charge of this, some standard for this, some standard for that, some accounting for this, some accounting for that. They needed to be an institute, but they were trying to avoid, like anything, calling it an institution. You know, we want to, we, we want to do all these things, but we don't want it to be an institution. It's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. One scholar of sociology of religion, he said, religions both benefit most and suffer the most from institutionalization. He said, but not institutionalizing is not an option. Inevitably, if you want to be organized and accomplish something. So there you are. So best thing is, and Prabhupada, particularly wanted an institution. He wasn't a person who said, well, just let it grow spontaneously, let everyone find his way. Um, he wanted everything to be quite, not everything, but he wanted an, an effective and well-run institution and a spiritually pure institution uh, with a, a governing body and with so many things. So the so we should try to, to to accomplish that. We know that we don't like institutions; they're a pain. And yet we know that we do like institutions. We like attending the Mangalarti. We like having breakfast, and you know, in the Prasadam Pavilion. We like so many things that are possible only because there's an institution. Hmm? We like distributing books and we like having books to distribute. Hmm? So these things become possible when there's an institution. Hmm. So we should just try to keep the institution um, true to its purposes. Thank you. Something else? Maharaj, just in connection with the Param Brahma Prabhu's previous question, uh, I heard one uh, one of the Prabhupada disciple, he was quoting some conversation between Prabhupada and his disciple. I just want to verify whether it is right or not. So in the in gist, it was said that Prabhupada was saying in that conversation that one who is who has read even one word or one line of my book, he is already initiated. Something like that. So... Then why did Prabhupada chant on beads and give the beads to people and say your name is and what rules will you follow? So this was, I heard from... Maybe. It, in a certain... You know, initiation means to begin. If you've read even a word in Prabhupada's books, you've begun. But the beginning is not the end. We didn't, you, Prabhupada had an initiated disciples book. It's not that it's full of names of people who've read one, one word or one line of, of Krishna book. It's people who agreed, yes, I'll follow these rules. Uh, and Prabhupada gave, chanted on their beads and gave them a name. 
they're the initiated disciples. Not that anyone who's who, who read a page. No? So it has a context. It, they've begun. It's not nothing. But you have to follow through. Hare Krishna. Um, on this topic, um, it seems that all the controversies or the offshoots have come from the core of um, ISKCON. All, the, all in, the, well, by definition, offshoots come from the, from the main plant. From the main plant. So that's what an offshoot is. So it seems that the, the core is the original. Core is? Is the original. Means the, yeah. what Srila Prabhupada has established. Mm. And then as people develop in the institution, or as they are established in the institution, some may have the tendency to think that this might be better or that might be better. But it may not necessarily, I mean, it's not necessarily true. Correct. So, um, in the one sense, when we look at ISKCON as a whole body, um, His Holiness Kadamba Kanana Maharaj was talking about its mercy all, way, all the way around, like Mangalati, as you mentioned. And then mm -hmm. Mangalati. You have a tendency to go like this, and it makes it hard for me. If you oh, sorry. speak loud and clear, yeah. that would help me a lot more. Yes. So um, Kadamba Kanana Maharaj mentions this, um, the whole program from morning till evening, just anything that we do, it all has mercy as an element. Yeah. So we're getting mercy from here, we're getting mercy from there, we're getting mercy from all different aspects. So yes. if we isolate, if we isolate ourselves, we might be missing out on certain aspects of yes. that mercy. Yeah. yeah, therefore we don't recommend that one isolate oneself better to perform devotional service in the association of devotees yes it seems to be have so many aspects if you mm -hmm. if you analyze it from a certain perspective what should a Prabhupada has established has so many aspects to mm -hmm. which is it's not just one simple or two simple things it's multitude yeah, of, so much is there yeah Yes. Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, in I can recall one of the conversation with uh, you know Prabhupada is having with the Raj Gopalachari, the then governor uh, of uh, independent India. And he, in, in his question, is, in his rather query, you know, worry, he asked Prabhupada, what if people start associating themselves with institution? Hmm. Uh, and then it, become, it will become like chaotic because everyone will start thinking that it's just institution and they will start associating him themselves rather than Krishna Bhakti than institution. So what Excuse will, me? if people start themselves associating with, associating with the institution like ISKCON, yeah. So what will happen then? It will become chaotic. Like, you know, everyone will be associating himself. Everyone will be, blah, 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 blah. Everyone will do what? <laughs> oh, just please. I, I get very frustrated when people, they speak very clearly and then they go into this, something like this. And then I have to, you know, I'd, I'd just be so much more grateful if I don't have to ask people to repeat and repeat. Every word that you say that you want me to hear, say loud and clear. Otherwise, just throw it away, and 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 you know, don't include it. I, I, I you know, I, what can I say? How many times? It, partly, it's my fault. I have a, a a hearing deficit, but it's also people. We we speak like this, and then we and then then we speak like that, and then we, you know, so you get like sixty percent, seventy percent. Seven. That's not enough. And I have to guess at the rest. 
Speak clearly. You're a teacher. You're a preacher. Your teaching and preaching will be effective, first of all, if people can hear you. If, if you can't be, you know, understood just what the words are, forget what they mean, but if the words themselves can't be heard, what's going to be the effect of your preaching? Speak loudly and speak clearly and speak slowly enough and take into account also that um, Bideshis don't necessarily immediately pick up Indian accents. So then you need to add an extra, you know, 5% of clarity. So uh, in one of is in conversation with Raj Gopalachari. I got that, yes. The then governor of, of India. independent he India. He said everything will became, become chaotic if there's an institution. And, and that's where you went into, I couldn't understand you. So then? So, so then Prabhupada replied, uh, it's just not an ordinary institution. It's just not an in ordinary institution. It's, it's Krishna consciousness. Hmm. That, that, this whole institution is is Krishnaites. Mm. So <clears throat> then people will it will be Krishna consciousness institution. So like every activity that we will gonna perform here will be like Krishna consciousness activity, be it management, be it uh, you know spiritual spiritually related programs and all that. It will all become like spiritualized. Yes. So there is no point of you know rad, uh, mundane institution that we see outside. They are doing activities outside realm. So mm -hmm. my point is, you know, if we have this institution in place and we are having these activities which is going on, you know, in around institution, is it all activities? Are spiritual, whether we see it in a management, we see it in spiritual activities, because you know sometimes we see things um, is rather seems beyond our like you know, spiritual realm when we see things happening around. We get confused whether it's spiritually totally spiritual or we are doing management. Management, everything is spiritual when it's done for Krishna and Krishna consciousness. The deity worship is is spiritual. Keeping the accounts is spiritual. The legal department is spiritual. Procurement of you know, whatever the necessities are is spiritual. Cleaning the floor is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Hmm? But it should be done for Krishna. When you're taking you know, a 20% cut for your own sense gratification, that's not spiritual. Hmm? When you're embezzling money from the institution, that's not spiritual. When you're using your post for uh, your own purposes, for your own goals, that's not spiritual. But when you're doing everything for Krishna's satisfaction, then whatever it is, spiritual. So that's up to you, and it's also up to the management. The management, if it's strong management, then I remember there was a time when here in Vrindavan, the monthly expenditures were really high. And then, you know, from all the departments, so high. And then Devaki Nandan Prabhu brought in his accountant from Bombay. And all of a sudden, the expenses went way down. And basically, because the taps got turned turned off, you know, so much money was going this way and that way, because no one was watching. So as soon as there was someone watching, oh, the expenses came down. So on the one side, we should be honest and dedicated and and free from duplicity. And on the other side, there should be someone looking over our shoulder to make sure that we're honest and free from duplicity. And the Brahmacharya Ashram. We should be dutiful and get up early in the morning and perform. And on the, on the other side, there should be somebody who's checking. Did this man get up in the morning? Did he attend this? Did he do that? And you get the discipline. 
So that's, I don't know why someone would say that an institution makes things chaotic. Institutions usually go the other way. You have chaos without the institution. Institution, usually the problem is that it, it's, it, it gets rid of chaos, but it gets rid of individual initiative, creativity. That's the downside of it. You know, when there's no institution, you say, I think I'm going to do this. And you go out and do something, and it, it either turns flops or it turns out great. You can be very creative. Whether there's an institution, then you write up a proposal, and it's reviewed by a seven-man board, and then they pass it to another board, and they revise it and send it back. And then it goes to uh, somebody else to review, and then it gets sent back down to you for for uh, correction. And then, it, you know, four years later, when you're, um, you're married and you've just had your first kid and you signed up for a job and, and the service is no longer available, they decide that, yes, it's all right, now you can do it. That's the downside of an institution. It, it, it gives you red tape and it gives you mm, rules and it gives you, it, so it, it's, it, it, it's a little anti, it, it, it works against spontaneity and creativity. But on the other side, if it's all spontaneity and cre creativity, everything can go chaotic. So I don't know why one would say that an institution makes for chaos, it, more the other way, it makes things dull. Um, but apart from that, the, the point is that we, you, you can't really avoid it again. You, you need, if you want to push on in a big way, you need a, a society, you need an institution. So then let's keep the institution Krishna conscious, let's manage it nicely. Uh -huh. Maharaj, uh, this institution, institution, you know, whatever we take, institution is made of, you know, small entities like us. We all devotee makes it, makes it uh, institution itself. Like institution is not a, a, like something domain, it just comes on the ground. We, the people, like, you know, devotees coming together, we having different prescribed duties, prescribed seva and all that. Consisting yeah, obviously together. a government means there has to be people. Yeah. A so nation it, has to have people. Otherwise, what's the use of a government? And this individual devotee's integrity, his, you know, nature, his, you know, way of dealing with other devotees and everything, it makes an institution an institution. So that's something... Yes and no. I mean could be an institution without your wonderful creativity. But everyone gets to contribute. Uh, whether it's creativity or whether it's just um, dedication or what, you know, so everybody brings something. So yes, I mean, obviously an institution means an institution of, for the sake of people or, or with the participation of people. That's kind of obvious, isn't it? It's a society. You can't have a society without members. But the members itself don't make the society. There's a government. There's a, not just members. Right? In America, you know, yeah, we can't have a government. We're a government of the people, by the people, for the people. That's our slogan in America. But it's, you, still, you need a government, and the government is not going to be all the people meeting in Washington, D.C. and deciding policy. There's some system by which it's decided. Right? Maharaj, is, is institution or government you're talking about is an abstract entity. It's not like... No, it's not. Government is not an abstract entity. It, it's, it's, uh, it's concrete. The, the the government can put you in jail. Abstract enemies entities wouldn't wouldn't put you in jail, but the the government can put you in jail, or the the government can give you a medal. The government can send you to college. Government can do so many things. Abstract entities don't do anything. Anyway, I don't want to sit here talking about abstract enti entities and management theory and sociology of religion and all that, because really we're meant for Krishna Kata, and this becomes... We just got deviated from the topic, you know. Yeah, so it's all, this is all Krishna. 
you know, but <laughs> Prabhupada one time in regard to institution, he said, uh, we should never forget our real purpose, which is to become mad after Krishna. So that's the purpose of our, you know, what is the purpose of your institution? Our purpose is to become mad after Krishna. That's, you know, that's the purpose. That's why Prabhupada created this institution, so that people could become mad after Krishna. Uh, what is that in, in Hindi? Krishna, Sri Krishna, uh, Antarastriya Sri Krishna Bhavanamrita Shank, an association for Krishna Bhavanamrita, for the nectar of uh, absorption in, in the Krishna Bhavanamrita, well, Krishna consciousness, but in, in love for Krishna, uh, ecstatic love for Krishna. That's the, the purpose of our society. If we don't do that, what are we doing? So we shouldn't forget our purpose, which is to become mad after Krishna. That's that's what we're trying to do. And therefore we're reading this chapter, how the gopis are thinking of Krishna in separation, how they're remembering Krishna's flute, Krishna's uh, cows, Krishna's coward boys, Krishna <clears throat> making the cows feel stupid. Uh, stunned, and so on. R remembering all these features of Krishna's personality and qualities again and again and again and again. That's the purpose of our Krishna consciousness movement, to spread this, this feeling for Krishna, understanding of Krishna, consciousness of Krishna, Antarastriya um, all over the world. That's the purpose. If we lose sight of that, it becomes a very dull institution. You know, buildings and, and uh, you know, all the other dull stuff. Uh, there has to be a, this purpose always. That's what, you know, what makes it all worthwhile. Is that okay? Sorry, Manaji, for that, my blubbering. That's okay. We've killed men for less. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, we have seen that Krishna has been killing demons, mm. giving pleasure to his friends. Mm. Now we're talking. <laughs> So what does Krishna have specific roles he comes to play? Or his point, does Krishna have specific roles that he comes to play? Or he spontane uh, spontaneously comes and exhibits whatever? No, he's got a schedule. <laughs> now it's time for me to come as Baraha. Now it's time for me to come as Nishingadev. Now it's time for me to come as uh, Matsya or Kurma. He's got, what is that? Scheduled incarnations. Uh, of course, he can spontaneously appear at any time. That's up to him. But we read in, from the beginning of the Bhagavatam, he's got a schedule. Okay. Um, should we have Kirtan? Did you have some... Yeah. One more question related to the last one. Mm. You just said that Krishna incarnates in all the different species also. Yeah. Does that just mean Raha Dev and Nishinga, or does that also no, mean... No, there's more. It, that we don't know about? Yeah. That he's, he's, yeah. Yeah. Prahlad says every species of life. So he's always doing something. He's always doing something. <laughs> Who's leading Kirtan? Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare, Hare. Mm -hmm. You're going to lead Kirtan. Okay, you're on. You know the rules. You've been around, right? You know the rules, right? Okay. One one tune. 
one mantra, sweet and melodious. That's it. Not too many rules. Hmm? And at the end, just, oh, yeah, just Hare Krishna throughout. You don't have to add anything at the end. At least that's how we do it around here. Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shemate Divananda Swami Tinamanya Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Veta Gadada Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakti Vrindi Vida Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 
Hare Rama 
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna <laughs> Sham Kunradha Kunikiri Govardhan ki jai, Vrindavan Tham ki jai, Navadip Tham ki jai, Jagannath Puri ki jai, Ganga Mai ki jai, Ramana Mai ki jai, Tulsi Devi ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, All glories to the assembled devotees, All glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees. Go Premanande Hari Hari Bo. Thank you all. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.